A friend once tried to order beignet in New Orleans that were light on the sugar. The waitress was perturbed. When the beignet arrived, they came with sugar on the side, in a bowl, two inches deep. Indigenous to New Orleans, beignet are of the same genus as donuts but a separate species, pieces of puffed up fried dough with an airiness somewhere between buoyancy and levitation. They leave drifts of confectioner's sugar in their wake. Matt Pace, who grew up in New Orleans East and moved to New York a decade ago to make a life as a painter, started frying up his hometown treat at outdoor food markets in 2014 under the name Book Who Beignet. He taught kickboxing on the side, I've had many lives, he said with a laugh, and saved money toward opening a restaurant, which he finally did last August, Café Buku, on the border of Carroll Gardens and Gowanus in Brooklyn yes indeed, proclaims the front wall in electrified letters, backed by ads for old-time New Orleans goods like some good coffee and chicory, and Charles E. Arath's red-hot creole pepper sauce, concocted in 1916. Next to the posted menu, a handwritten Creole cheat sheet defines terms like po boy and boku, slang version of the French boku, meaning a lot or very good. Neon bright big shot sodas, typically found only in stores down south, line the counter. Mr. Pace's menu has expanded to include mac and cheese rich from a roux spiked with crystal hot sauce first bottled on Chapatula Street in New Orleans, and larded with crawfish tails. Here, too, is jambalaya crimson from tomato paste, with buried nubs of chicken and smoky andouille. The rice is swollen and clingy, drunk on chicken broth and vegetable stock, thick enough for a spoon to stick straight up. The heat can. Full force is sanctifying. Gumbo starts with a simple roux of butter and flour and the holy trinity of onion, celery, and bell pepper. Sweetness leeches from shrimp, heat from andouille. Okra is banished. I had a very traumatizing experience with okra in childhood, Mr. Pace said. We're not friends. Instead, he thickens the dish with file ground dried sassafras leaves, a legacy of the Choctaw tribe in Louisiana. There's just enough of its camphor undertone to bring dimension, without smacking of medicine. These dishes are relegated to sides on the menu, but they were my favorites. The po' boys are more low-key in flavor, built on bread shipped from Leidenheimer Baking Company in New Orleans not always in peak condition, but when it is, a lovely compact of whisper-thin crust that fissures at the touch and an interior half-air dot their pretty sandwiches, belying their blue-collar origins in New Orleans's 1929 streetcar strike. The DDP, which shares Mr. Pace's mother's initials, showcases Patton's hot sausage, considered so essential to the New Orleans diet that newspaper articles after Hurricane Katrina reported evacuees stockpiling it. A white remoulade muffles some of the sausage's sting, crispy onions splinter nicely under the teeth. The Versailles, layered with fried catfish, carrots, and pickled cabbage and slaked with a sauce of satsumas, mandarin oranges, and chili, calls to mind the sweet sour tang of banh mi. It's Mr. Pace's homage to the Vietnamese American community in the Versailles section of New Orleans East. Let it sit for a minute, the flavors grow stronger the longer the pickles and sauce soak into the bread. For the granddaddy, a meld of beer, butter, and Worcestershire sauce is squeezed over shrimp as they seethe on the grill. They achieve a perfect char, but the slather of onion jam gets sweeter with each bite. In the morning, there are sweet potato waffles and slightly soupy grits, oversweet from a spill of barbecue sauce. 
Better are the biscuit sandwiches, for which Mr. Pace gently kneads the dough in a double boiler set over ice, to keep the butter as cold as the grave, and a pecan pie muffin, which tastes like a psychological trick, as dense and lush inside as pecan pie too rich to take more than one bite, yet you do dot and at any time of day, beignet, fried swiftly in oil kept at a steady 375 degrees. Some of my fellow diners, pining over memories of Café du Monde in the French Quarter, grumbled that these were too puffy, or not puffy enough, and round instead of square. No matter, the beignet disappeared, and we shed sugar like snow all the way home. Follow NYT Food on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter and Pinterest. Get regular updates from NYT Cooking, with recipe suggestions, cooking tips, and shopping advice.